Good morning from the Denton Public Library. It's Miss Robin here, and thanks for spending a few minutes with me today. Let's talk a little bit about art. There's all types of art, and some of you are very artistic. Um, let's think of some forms of art. Of course, there's painting, which uh, there's drawing. Uh, people uh, sculpt things with clay. That's art. Uh, there's other things considered art, like... Um, singing and dancing and lots of things people create with cloth you could just go on and on and on and i know a lot of you are very artistic but today let's talk a little bit about painting i'm um, going to share a little bit with you about that but uh mainly we're just going to have a little bit of fun with it here all right uh, i've got a couple books i want to share with you one's called discover great paintings it's a book we have in the children's department in the library and in it, this is a good book for studying paintings. They go through the history of some of the paintings. I'll just show you one for an example. And like this painting here, if you will read the material, it tells you that there are little hints hidden in this painting, and it tells you what to look for. So a pretty interesting book. Their ages are hidden in some things and some other details. Their ages? Mm -hmm. So some some artwork, if you really look into the details, you can find a lot of things there. All right, another book is called Look, Really Smart Art. And what does this look like to you? Does it look like maybe a face with hair and a nose and eyes? You see that? Okay, watch as we turn it. Now what do you see? Do you see a different picture? Oh. Do you see some bushes and a thatch hut maybe and some villagers sitting outside wow pretty cool isn't it let's look again this way and this way this book is full of some really fun details oh here's one i really like right here this art form is called trump loy it's a french term which means to deceive the eye or trick the eye. It's made to look like there's a painting behind a curtain that someone has hanging in their house. But actually, the curtain is part of the painting. And so it tricks your eye. I like that type of painting. I've seen some real real fun ones. You can look that up on your computer. Trompeloy art. Um, here's an interesting picture. 3D trick with art. Oh, wow. oh, I think that is so creative. Look at that. This is all is part of the drawing. Isn't that really cool? Mm -hmm. But this is a book that has a lot of secret skills that artists use in their painting. Things that they use to make things look like they're in motion. Um, things you tease your eye. Kind of like art puzzles. So if you look at this book, I think you'll really be astounded at some of the things you see. All right, those are both nonfiction or true books in our library. Now, just sort of some fun books to look at and to read. This is one called Matthew's Dream. It's about a mouse who wants to grow up and become a painter and express his dreams through his paintings. This one is called Art Dog. And this is about the Dogopolis Museum of Art. And one night, a piece of art is stolen from that. It's kind of a mystery book. Art dog. And a book I'm going to read you today is called Incredible Ned. You could see what he said. Oh, some people consider this a problem. It might be kind of fun for a while, but let's listen and find out what happens. It's written by Bill Maynard and is illustrated by Frank, and I think his name is pronounced Remkowitz, as far as I can find out. Puffin Books is the publisher of this. Incredible Ned. Incredible Ned, you could see what he said. Everything that he spoke appeared over his head, or right <laughs> next to his chair, or a few yards away, and his friends would all shout, We can see what you say. Well, when Ned said gorilla, the kids all jumped back, for they saw a gorilla and feared an attack. And when Ned said bananas, bananas were there, on the stove, in the sink, in his hair, everywhere. If a word that Ned said was the name of a thing, then that thing might float by on the end of a string. He could say the words and or the and have nothing to fear. 
It was words like baboons that made baboons appear. <laughs> it started when Ned was a child of one. His father came home one day and asked, what has Ned done? And his mother replied, well, it may sound absurd, but today was the day I saw his first word. You saw his first word? You saw his first word? You saw his first word? Don't you really mean heard? No, Ned's problems began on his first day of school. Every time that he spoke, he felt more like a fool when the things that he said appeared over his head or on top of his desk or a few rows away. Then his classmates would shout, We can see what you say. <laughs> when Ned said giraffe, you could see a giraffe. And his neck was so long, it made everyone laugh. Wow, what a classroom that was, right? I'm glad this doesn't happen. <laughs> <laughs> when Ned said parade, one appeared by the wall and marched straight down the class and out into the hall. No wonder the children didn't get their books read. It was so much fun just to watch what Ned said. <laughs> then his teacher complained, We're not getting work done. With young Ned in the class, school is too much fun. I can't get him to stop. Every day gets worse. I will have to get help. Ned must go see the nurse. Are you sick? Asked the nurse. Are you blowing your nose? Are you, have you started to sneeze? Are there pains in your toes? Have you eaten too much? Have you had any spills? You might need some time off, or you could use some pills. Some pills, said poor Ned, uh -uh. and the room quickly filled with some 4,003,200 pills. Pills that cover the desk and the chairs. What was worse, there were so many pills that they covered the nurse. I can't help, said the nurse, though I'm glad Ned stopped by. He's not sick. It's a trick. Let the band leader try. Maybe Ned's a musician, the band leader thought. He might sing. He might play. He just needs to be taught. When he asked Ned to name all the things in a band, all the things filled the class. There was no place to stand. I can't cure him, he said. And I think I know why. It's his words, not his notes. Let the French teacher try. Zoot, said the French teacher. Ned needs some new things to say. Words like bonbon for candy and jour for play. But when Ned said bateau, that's the French word for boat, you could see a bateau. It was real. It could float. And when Ned said voiture, that's the French word for car, the class saw a voiture. This was going too far. Well... I think Ned's teacher had had it. Oh, no. <laughs> Ned's poor teacher was at the end of her rope. So far, no one had help, but she had one last hope. For there was one last someone who wasn't the same. So she made one last call, and the principal came. Yeah. The principal? Wow! That made Ned feel real sad. When the principal comes, then you know things are bad. In your school, she's the law. In your school, she's the boss. And the last thing you want is for her to feel cross. Ned, the principal said, I will have to be stern, for we want the class calm so the children can learn. For whenever you speak, the whole class comes apart. Since you can't seem to stop what you didn't mean to start, I have made up a rule that should satisfy all. You'll say nothing at all, or go stand in the hall. Say nothing at all, or go stand in the hall? Ned must never say back. Never say ball. And that's it, Ned decided. I guess I won't speak. And he sat there in silence for almost a week. Till the art teacher came by on her usual day, and they told her why poor Ned had nothing to say. Oh, my goodness, she said. Let me stop those complaints. And she gave Ned some pencils and paper and paints. Then she watched what Ned did, and she liked what she saw when he picked up a pencil and started to draw. He drew fish, he drew birds, he drew flowers and trees, he drew lions and tigers and monkeys and bees. What is that? asked the teacher. A lion, said Ned, and nothing but nothing showed over his head. What is that? asked the teacher. A tree smiled. She could understand Ned, and she knew why those things had shone over his head. Ned's an artist, she said. That's what Ned's all about. When your head's full of pictures, they have to come out. Now, to show those great pictures that lived in his head, he didn't need to use words. He could draw them. 
instead because painting and talking are equally real. They're just two different ways to show folks how you feel. And as long as Ned colored and painted and drew, he could speak just like me. He could talk just like you. And nothing he said appeared over his head or right next to his desk or a few yards away. And his classmates, classmates complained, we can't see what you say. But at times, when young Ned is home late at night, and when he's opened his window and turned out his light, when he puts his pens away and paints on the shelf, and he's sure he's alone, he'll say, moose, to himself. <laughs> and a moose will appear at the foot of his bed, and he'll still know that he is incredible Ned. <laughs> <laughs> oh, a fun book. <laughs> but he was a pretty good artist, wasn't he? Yeah. Incredible Ned. You can see what you said. That might be fun for a little while. Then it might get a little annoying to some people, might it? All right. I want to show you a little activity today that's fun. And I call it making either puffy or puffer paint. I usually call it puffer paint. And it only takes four ingredients that you probably have at home. And I'm going to go over those with you. You need self-rising flour. You'll need salt, you'll need some water that I've just poured in here, and you'll need food color. So self-rising flour, salt, water, and food color. All right, the first thing you do to get started is you take equal amounts of self-rising flour and salt. In this bowl, I've already poured a third of a cup of self-rising flour. Now, let's add a third of a cup because we want equal amounts, equal meaning the same amount. So I'm putting a third of a cup of salt now. Adding that to my flour. I'm going to stir the self-rising flour and the salt together a little bit. And I'm going to gradually, very slowly, start adding some water. Pour just a little bit and start to stir. It's better to not pour too much and have to add some. It's easier to add than to take away. But if you did, you could just add a little more self-rising flour and salt. What you're aiming for is to get it Almost the consistency of yogurt, maybe a little bit more runny than yogurt. It's getting close now, just a little more. Kind of see the consistency that we have it now. It pours, but it's not runny like water. Kind of like yogurt, isn't it? Okay. At this point, you can take your mixture and divide it into little containers or bowls so that you can add food coloring, a few drops, to those different containers to make different colors. And I've already done that today, and I'll show you what I've done. I've divided mine up, and I've made three colors with the food color, and I've got yellow, I've got a pretty little blue, almost all like a robin's egg blue, and an orange. And you can mix your colors and come up with different colors. So, let's start painting with the puffer paint. To paint with puffer paint, you're going to need something other than just a piece of paper. You can use a piece of cardboard. I've pulled this out of my packaging thing. Uh, you're going to need either brushes, some things you can paint with like Q-tips. I especially liked painting with these. In fact, let me show you what I've already done and then we'll do one together. This is a piece of cardboard off the back of a cereal package so you can paint on that well. Oh, here's my, can you see the way the paint is puffed up? Can you turn it to the side? This way? Or how? Like so. Yeah, it sticks out off the yeah. cardboard. Mm -hmm. There's one I've done. 
This is a piece of packaging material. I think you can really see that one puffed oh, up. Yeah. You could do Valentine's Day cards. Oh, yes, you could. And I did these about a week ago, so they're holding well. This is actually just a piece of cardboard with designs on it. And the thicker you paint, the more it'll puff up. All right, let's just paint a little design on this piece of paper here. Hmm, let's maybe, I think I'll just try to do a little, little flower maybe. You can use a brush. I just particularly like using the Q-tip, maybe. Maybe I'll try a yellow dot in the middle, see if it'll, how that works. All right. Let's just make some, let's just make some dots around the edge. Decorate our picture. There's paper that you can have called card stock. It's a little bit thicker paper. You can make cards out of that. All right. Whenever you finish whatever picture you're going to do, you simply take it, and Miss Susan's going to follow me, and we're going to put it in the microwave now. Microwave? Mm -hmm. We're going to put it in the microwave for 30 seconds. And wait and see what happens to our puffer paint. Now, is that 30 seconds for our microwave that doesn't work very well, or any microwave? We'll, we'll find out, won't we? Okay. Start with 30 seconds and see how that works. I've even seen people, you can buy puffer paint that's already made in the store, and I've seen people paint on clothes with that. It turned out pretty neat. So, But this homemade puffer paint, very easy, and usually you'll have those four ingredients at home. All right, let's see if our painting is baked yet. Oh, it sure is. Look at that. And be careful when you take it out. It can be a little warm if you have a lot of paint on your paper. But you can see how it's puffed. Can you see how it's puffed up? Mm -hmm. Pretty cool, isn't it? Puffer paint. guys for joining us. That's all I have for today and I hope you have a beautiful week and weekend. Make some puffer paint. Have some fun. Bye-bye.